What is up, YouTube? I'm on a bit of a bender. Bender? Bender? What is that? That's not what I meant. What I'm trying to say is I am going through, I guess you could say a little phase with liminal spaces. Now for anyone who's unaware of what those are, let me look it up because I actually don't remember either. It encompasses physical spaces that due to their function are transitional in nature. Hallways, waiting rooms, parking lots, and rest stops are the archetypical examples of such places. Something about them reminds me of my childhood, my past. It brings back memories and nostalgia, the sensations that I know I will never again feel in my entire life because I'm not a kid anymore. And my perspective on the world has been permanently altered since then. When you look at these, you might think there's nothing particularly compelling about any of these images, but these images will invoke different feelings for different people. For some, it's dread. Others, it's nostalgia, possibly fear, loneliness. Today, we're going to go through, we're going to look at a bunch of images and just go on this calm, relaxing journey together, you and I. Let's get started. Oh man, this is an interesting photo. It's, it's hard to describe. Typically, something like this should be filled with dining tables, chairs, but the fact that this entire room is completely empty is a little unsettling. I actually love this one. I know it seems dingy and unremarkable. When I look at this, I imagine I am walking backstage of a show that I'm about to perform in or I'm about to go up and give a speech for. As an actor, I've become very used to the environment of the backstage area. All of the props and set pieces laying around in a way that an audience is never supposed to see. Really a different world. The curtain is this magical barrier that disconnects the audience from the inner workings of the play. You guys ever notice when you're driving on the freeway, there will be these openings in the wall that are sort of positioned like this, where it looks like you can walk through but you can't quite see it because it's set in a direction where you're driving away from the opening. I remember my dad driving me to elementary school and there was this one opening in the wall that I would always rubberneck to try to see because I wanted to know what hidden secrets were behind that wall. It's probably just a neighborhood. <gasps> oh my goodness, Looney Tunes background. You'll see the similar backgrounds like this in certain art styles and video games. I used to play a kid's game called Freddy Fish. A lot of these backgrounds in Looney Tunes are reminiscent of those old games that I used to play. This one in particular reminds me of where my mom used to work. I would go and help her in the warehouse. And there was one floor of the building that looked like it used to be a department store. All the lights are out. Some of the elevators are just like half open. And there's pallets and pallets of storage everywhere things that are probably never going to get touched again there were a lot of these square pillars with the mirrors on them however that squid off to the left is a little unnerving i don't know if i'd want to stay here any longer with that thing around a very strange place for a birthday party it most definitely is i love the added touch of halloween themed balloons to me there's something really comforting about this photo as a kid i always thought these jumpers with the slides were the pinnacle, like the most fun you could possibly have. This one right here is giving me some serious Tomb Raider vibes. The very first console game I ever played, my cousins came to visit from Texas and the eldest cousin at the time, I think he was 17, brought his PlayStation 1. I remember playing Tomb Raider The Last Revelation and I thought that game was absolutely terrifying. I didn't want to get past the first enemy in the cave. I remember going back and replaying the tutorial over and over again because there was that one dude in the white hat who would just help you the entire time. I'm definitely getting a bit of that vibe with the hallway leading up to an unknown room and you have to jump because it's out of reach. Tomb Raider is also probably a big reason I got into parkour. I'm getting some SCP-087 vibes from this one. Granted, that one is more of a linear drop and arguably creepier than this. These look like escalators that are under construction and they're cinder block as part of the material. So I'm not sure where this would be and why it's set up like this. It could be a CG render for all I know. This one reminds me of a location I was at in Brazil when we were filming. It was a giant building. There were endless hallways and rooms and the style of window that we have right here looks very similar. The placement is super odd because this is a window you're used to seeing facing outside 
side and it just leads to another part of the room. The room's not even cut off in any way, so why would you need to see in here? And the rest of the room is bare with different colored carpet. That was one thing about malls as a little kid. I remember staying on the tile walkway because it was like the yellow brick road. You're not supposed to stray off of that path. This blue carpet is very reminiscent of that. This one reminds me of the hallway in the Matrix Reloaded. The one that with all the doors leading to different parts of the Matrix. My question is, how did this guy get up here? Or is that a is that an actual person or is that a prop? I can't tell. A lot of people find these ones creepy and unnerving, but I actually find this one pretty calming as well, especially since it leads out into an endless ocean right outside. It just makes me think subconsciously of endless possibilities in a rather refreshing environment. I love things that are tropical, oceanic. It's very invigorating in my mind. Yes, this is the one right here. Back in the day, I used to play Halo 2 quite a bit. I played the single player. Eventually, I figured out how to get outside of the map, thanks to YouTube. You get this weird sensation of, I'm not supposed to be here. I'm not supposed to see this. Parts of maps like these give me that same sensation. I imagine the main character is running through a different area in this image, and you should never be able to access this portion of the map. Like, there must have been some crazy occurrence that happened that knocked the character off of the beaten path. Another thing I find very intriguing are the facades in old video games. When you'd see a background image, that would just be a 2D picture. Nowadays, if you see a mountain off in the distance, you can usually travel to it yourself. I remember wanting so badly to leave the playing field that I was given by the developers and go to this place with limitless possibilities off in the distance, something that would deepen my connection with this fictional world that I was enjoying so much. Where did everyone go? I don't know exactly how old I was. I remember waking up in the morning and I couldn't find anyone. I was absolutely filled with terror. There was a moment where I thought I was the only person left on earth. And a lot of these liminal spaces re-invoke that feeling. Obviously as an adult, I don't have such a delusional perspective on the world. I, at least I hope. This one is interesting to me because of the odd, pl oh, I just realized that's an entire pool. I thought this was a lobby and there happened to be a pool next to it. That's even weirder. This pool is filled with all of these chairs. I don't know if they're just storing them or what. I'm just imagining sitting on that couch and then someone else being in that jacuzzi adjacent. It would be kind of chill, but it wouldn't make any sense at the same time. I think the further I go down this rabbit hole, the better ideas I get for films down the line. I think this location right here would be so amazing to shoot something horror, surreal, dreamlike. Those are the types of genres that I connect with. Movies like The Shining really embody the look that I go for in cinematics. Oh, this one, dude. This one makes you feel like you are trapped on a journey. If you sit down in that chair, you're going somewhere, but you're not moving. That doesn't make any sense, but that's how it feels. I am in love with this one. There's nothing even particularly liminal about it. It's just chairs sitting in front of a chalkboard, but the way that it's angled makes me feel like I am on a flight. This is almost a room that's moving. As I got older, I had a lot more trouble sleeping. Just going to bed, getting anxious about the different things that I had to get done that day or that week really would get into my head so I couldn't sleep. And sleeping felt like a waste of time because I am in one position for eight hours in a room. I could very easily get up and start doing something. Sleeping doesn't feel like a waste of time when you're in a car or on a plane because it's like you're getting something done while you're asleep. In my mind, when I see an image like this, I find it very relaxing because we're sitting in a classroom, we're about to learn, and we're going somewhere. There's a deeper purpose behind the learning. It's not education for the sake of learning. It's education for when we get to our destination. The shape of this, is this a fountain or a pool? I don't even, it looks like a fountain. Yeah, there's those little jets. Is this a restaurant? I don't even know what this location is. The whole room is liminal at this point because I don't know where we're going. It almost looks like the stairway is leading directly onto the fountain jets. It's probably right next to it going down to the floor, but the steps also look higher than the stage that has the railings directly behind it. So I would love to see what the rest of this room looks like. I haven't seen very many of these abstract cloud photos in our search so far, but I think those are some of my favorite. The empty playgrounds, the windows leading out into the ocean or 
into the clouds are, they provide this burst of euphoria, a dreamlike euphoria, as it were. Yep, this is what I'm talking about. I think this is why I'm so nostalgic for early PC gaming. The Windows XP background with the clouds, just, it reminds me of a really wonderful time in my life when my grandmother and dad were still around and my perspective of the world was a lot less complicated than it is now. Ones like these make me sad. I'm not that big on going to the mall, but I do have fond memories of going there when I was younger. Seeing it so empty reminds me of the people that are no longer in my life, that have either left because they've departed this world or were no longer on speaking terms. So. I hold a particular place of sorrow in my heart for images like these. This one reminds me of the old TV shows I used to watch on PBS Kids. Between the Lions, Zaboomafu, Zoom. Good times, good times. It's weird how, as a young person, you think you are on the cutting edge forefront of everything that's happening. And now that I'm 28, I look back and I realize this stuff is super dated. Like this isn't cutting edge anymore. It is unrecognizable compared to the imagery, the technology, the culture that we have now. I kind of date myself looking at this stuff. Guys, thank you so much for tuning into this very special video. I know this is vastly different from the type of content that I typically post, but it is deep and meaningful to my heart, and I figure that is the sort of thing that I should post. With all that being said, I know it's easy to look back on the past and reminisce and go, things were so much better then. In reality, things were different. There were aspects of life that were much worse, maybe some that were better than they are now, but life is continually moving forward and there is always something new to look forward to. If there's one lesson to take away from this, it's do not fall into the way of thinking that you have become comfortable cultivating. You should always be looking for opportunities to challenge your perspective and the things that you believe about life because as human beings, we'll never be able to grasp the entirety of the universe. That means that our capacity to learn more is unlimited. So you could spend your entire life increasing your breadth of knowledge, letting go of old perspectives and incorporating new ones. And that's not a bad thing. That doesn't make you wishy-washy. That doesn't make you ungrounded in a set of traditional beliefs. There always has to be a balance. A little bit of consistency and a little bit of nuance, a little bit of change. I hope everyone has a wonderful rest of their week. If you enjoyed this content, be sure to like the video. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Stay safe, y'all. Peace out.